Okay, well, I'm going to read a couple of verses, and um, yeah, we can just start with God. So today is November 30th, excuse me, 29th. So it says, let me infuse my peace into your innermost being. Mm. We need that, right? Yep. Yeah. That's this, my favorite devotional, too. Okay, yes, mm-hmm. right. How you, you, yeah, you, you, you one said of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you sit quietly in the light of my presence, you can sense peace growing within you. This is not something that you accomplish through self-discipline and willpower. It is opening yourself to receive my blessing. In this age of independence, people find it hard to acknowledge their neediness. However, I have taken you along a path that has highlighted, highlighted your need for me. Placing you in situations where your strengths were irrelevant and your weaknesses were glaringly evident. Hmm. Yeah. Though, excuse me, through the aridity, meaning the desert experience, of those desert marches, I have drawn you closer and closer to myself. You have discovered flowers of peace blossoming in the most desolate places. You have learned to thank me for hard times and difficult journeys, trusting that through them I accomplish my best work. You have realized that needing me is the key to knowing me intimately. Once again, you have realized that needing me is a key to knowing me intimately, which is the gift above all gifts. Mm, yeah. You have realized that needing me is the key to knowing me intimately. Isaiah 58 says, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. And Isaiah 40 says, He tends his flocks like a shepherd, or his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Amen. Okay, so we'll pray and keep that in our hearts throughout this day and this podcast. Amen. Yeah, thank you for being here, guys. So exciting. Thank you. Yeah. So, God, I thank you for this beautiful day, afternoon, uh, this morning, and uh, Lord, for the nerves that come with this. It's normal and it's um, part of just anticipating something new. And God, uh, we believe that you are in our bodies, in our emotions, in our nerves, but most of all in our hearts, in the souls that we have, that you've given us, in the Ruah, the Spirit of God that is in our hearts, in our bodies. So God, I pray that we can speak from that Ruah, from that God-breathed life. And thank you, yes, as we just read, for the trials that help us to intimately know you. Thank you, Lord. Help us to speak from that. And most of all, to encourage someone out there who's someone just like Elsie, someone just like Jake, someone just like me, that can hear this, watch this, and find hope and encouragement and support and know that they're not alone because you are with us, God. Fill this place with your presence, Lord. Fill this room as in a Sunday morning, as in a Sunday night, with your presence. Let this time be a time of worship a time of prayer and a time of joy and of gozo, of peace and most of all of Advent, of waiting for the return or the arrival of Messiah, Emmanuel. You are with us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you for Jake. Thank you again for Elsie. Thank you for my beautiful wife, Rochelle. Thank you for our kids, for David, for Isabella and Canela. Thank you for this home, for this studio, for this beautiful day. We rejoice in it and be glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. All righty, man. (laughs) Are we ready or what? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So uh, we've been rolling, so that's awesome. So welcome, Elsie, to the Trick Podcast with Joy. How's it going? Hey. Good. <laughs> good now that I'm here. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. So I'm excited. How was the drive here? It was good. Yeah. yeah, it was fine. Just no traffic. So we stayed in the area. We were visiting family okay. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was a smooth ride. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been uh, too... Well, we were at the, uh, at the airport. I mean, at the airport at my father-in-law's, you know, at the hospital mm-hmm. in Cedar sinai It's right. in Beverly Hills. And... It's nice once you're there, but getting there, oof, it's Crazy. quite the drive. I was yeah. born there, actually. You were? Yeah, okay. I was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So a lot of good memories. It's a nice, it's a nice hospital. Yeah. It really is. They yeah. have good people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's always, 
You know, it's always one of those things, obviously, I love him. He's my wife's dad, and he's been my mentor to me. And it's always awesome. like you, you go there, obviously, with a lot of hope and like, okay, this is going to be great. But then it's hard to see the person kind of in the hospital. Of course. And uh, you kind of come in with this positive, and then you get that shock of like, oh, wow, this is, you know, someone's in the hospital on the wires. Yeah, you and realize how serious it is, yeah. You realize how serious mm-hmm. it is, yeah. 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 But it's an example of life, right? I mean, we have, we just read how these those serious moments, they draw us intimately closer to God. Yeah, and I've, I know that that's true for all of us here. I have Jake here, by the way. Uh, your beautiful husband. So hey. he's he's back there. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to the podcast as well, Jake. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so you know what I what I love about it, hearing the stories, especially of artistic types. Yeah. And you are a worshiper, a worship leader. You're a singer songwriter, a vocalist, child of God, most of all. Amen. But yeah. what I love hearing in, I wanted to ask you just maybe a little bit of introduction. Yeah. You know, you uh, obviously, as I said, you're an artist. And would you say that empathy and emotions and being in touch with kind of your inner life helps you? Does it hinder you in terms of being a, a, a worshiper? How would you? How would you talk about that? Oh, it helps me so much. Okay. Goodness. Um, I know the two worlds of singing and ministering or, or just even performing without being in touch with who I really was. Yeah. And now I know the world of being a worshiper and a songwriter now fully being in touch with who I am. And they are two completely different realms. <laughs> you know, they really are. And I feel like and obviously you know the more in touch you are with yourself and like you said the empathy the empathy inside of you the just your true self your soul your spirit you know the ugly the great the wonderful the flawed all of it when you're really in touch with that and you own that you just conquer so much more as a worshiper and i feel like you conquer more even as a songwriter for me because i'm more honest like i'm not afraid of just talking about what's wrong with me and how is God so good in that? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So, yeah, it's 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 helped me break through and figure out like where I need to be and who I really am as an artist and and just as a worshiper unto the Lord, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I was reading this thing that we just read. I want to read it again cuz it was so amazing. This yeah. quote, maybe we can use that kind of as a yeah, there was one thing point. in there that I wanted okay. to steal as a lyric. Oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> where well. it said your strengths okay. are irrelevant, but your weaknesses are evident i was like dang that's a lyric right there <laughs> see we're writing songs already yeah. it's amazing sarah young who wrote that she's got bars <laughs> okay because <laughs> yeah. i was like that's a good line that right? and i thought and it hit me immediately when you okay said it. tell me like, again Whoa. what's the line and, and tell me how did it hit you well it said how um you know there's been times well there's times you have trusted me where your strengths are irrelevant and your weaknesses are evident and i'm like whoa isn't that like a daily thing you know and and then to hear your strengths are irrelevant, you have to humble yourself to even receive that. Because we all have strengths, but our strengths are limited and they're finite compared to God, right? So me hearing that just immediately humbles me. Like, you know, no matter how strong this area might be in my life or how gifted or wonderful or skilled or, you know, it's like, it's still limited beside the Lord, you know and i can if i give it to god then he can do more with it than me than myself apart from jesus i can do nothing right so yeah i just was like whoa that's a Tell good me line about limitations and what do you do when you're confronted with your limitations well <laughs> i'm like what what does everybody do with limitations i mean it yeah. just depends on what it is i mean recently i was sick so physically i was right. limited right exactly. So praise God, I'm fine now. Um, It was hard, you know? And then I was suffering from tonsillitis and it was just terrible. I mean, it was just horrible. The pain was horrific. Um, My husband almost had to rush me to the hospital. He was so worried and and I I was kind of too, but you know, I I had a moment with God, but I realized, you know, in that, um, sometimes we, I feel like we can just like depend on our gifts to kind of affirm our identity which is so reverse okay. to what the word teaches us right yeah. there's nothing in the word that says your gifts make make you feel great or make you know that you belong to christ that's not in the word you know so me not being physically able to sing and you know being sick and not being able to do because i'm a doer so and i just go 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 um 
so not being able to do much was frustrating you know and then not being able to sing that's who i am and that's how i in a way minister to myself a lot of times so to not be able to do that was like really frustrating and felt i felt kind of robbed of like how who i am right but i remember the lord telling me you know just because i can't physically hear you singing doesn't mean i'm not hearing your heart right now and i was like yeah you're right (laughs) you know because i was getting so caught up in that that it was really frustrating and and then even getting caught up in the fact that I couldn't serve, I couldn't minister, I couldn't, you know, because I love, I love doing it. I know I'm called to do it and I just thrive and, and I'm so uh, fulfilled when I do it because I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, right? But at the same time, ministry or not, I'm a child of God, like you said. Yeah. I am, I belong to Jesus. God loves me no matter what, no matter what I can or can't do, you know? And, and I think that's what I had to realize what that limitation was, even though I was limited temporarily and Thank God, God forbid, it couldn't have been for something, you know, future that would affect me long term or anything like that. Um, And even if it did, you know, does that rob me of who I am in Christ? No, but if I allow that, you know what I mean? If I allow that to make me defeated, you know, so I think any time I have faced limitations, like, of course, our human reaction, you know, we get frustrated. We're like, you know, why is this happening? Or sometimes I even feel limited, like with how I worship. I'm just... Am I saying the right thing? Am I singing the right thing? Did this, did I say enough? Did I not say enough? Did I say too much? You know, like immediately questioning myself. And I feel like with that, when I second guess what I do, instead of just letting the Lord and the Holy Spirit reign in that moment, I end up limiting God and myself to really embracing and like just flourishing in that moment, you know? So I more and more, it's like I'm my confidence has grown, you know, with how I worship. Oh, my gosh, it's grown so much because I I used to hold back. I mean, on notes on on even projecting like my voice because I was like just so timid and kind of like insecure and, you know, and um, thank God I had, you know, my worship pastor who passed now. Rest in peace. But he was like my mentor was like he, and he would tell me, gun it else. Like, what are you waiting for, girl? Just, you know, just push it out there like sing you need to sing that verse harder i'm like oh man so and i would and then he would leave that space and i wouldn't feel ashamed to do it you know because i would immediately feel ashamed like oh, i'm i'm coming off too strong you know it's like that performance kind of mentality of like am i doing too much i don't want to come off like i'm performing you know like i'm just showing off you know but i learned that there was a space to do that that it was embraced and that um i could be me you know and i didn't know i could so yeah, so I, it's just any limitations I've faced. I've, I'm so grateful God has literally orchestrated people to like make me aware of my limitations, but still find freedom that God is with me in that. And that he, he just does so much more beyond the limits, you know, if I let him do it right. instead of just depending on myself. Yeah. So who I am is the fruit of their labor. You know, I, I almost feel like, what did I do? Like, you know what I mean? Like they did so much, like just pouring into me and you've you've poured into me as well and even more so now that we've like built more relationship and with jake as well my husband i mean you just you've been an awesome part too you know so and i think the amazing thing is what i've learned with mentors is um first and foremost my time with god what is god saying to me and is it confirming through everyone else not they tell me something and then I go back to God and like, is that you? Like, I get the word first. I have to seek the Lord first and what is God telling me right now in this season? And everyone else will confirm that, right? So, and I just felt like the more I made time for that with the Lord and the more I, God kept setting up relationships around me, it just kept confirming where I was at. And I was like, oh, I'm really, I'm really hearing you, Lord. <laughs> I'm listening, you know, cause, cause I would, even that I would second guess, like, okay, I know you told me this, but and, and I'm a, and it's funny because I'm a words of affirmation love language. So I need reassurance. So, and God is so kind, you know what I mean? To set people up that will reassure you like verbally because that, that feeds me, right? So I think you're a words of affirmation too. Yeah. I can tell because I'm like, he's like so sweet, full of compliments. And I'm like, oh my God, I love you. Because, yeah, yeah. and I love people like that because I'm like that too, you know? Exactly. And my husband's one of those too. So I'm like, yes. Yeah. So, but I'm just so grateful because he really did set people around me that affirmed my gift and affirmed who I was in the Lord and affirmed what I was doing and and were honest. Like I didn't have people that were just constantly, you know, brushing me and hyping me up, you know, or putting me on a pedestal. I also had people telling me like, probably shouldn't have done that. 
you know, and the accountability as well of just growing and being just straight up, being real, being honest and saying, hey, you know, you got to reel it back or and that could have been musically couldn't have been a character thing, um, you know, and I, I'm so grateful. There was just I had so many people in my life from the very beginning of my walk. And I'm grateful I was humble enough to even receive that. You know what I mean? To receive that mentorship, that constant guidance, that and I encourage that for anyone who's a new believer or new in the ministry, always have someone that's watching your back and helping you strive to where God's calling you, you know? And I feel like my walk wouldn't have gotten as far as it did. I wouldn't have matured, I wouldn't have grown, I'd probably be stuck and probably definitely would not be where I'm at right now, you know? So it it all it all really just was such a blessing, you know, and even now I'm just so grateful. I have just such a great support system and I have honestly a handful of mentors and people that I can go to and say, Hey, what do I need to change about this? Or what do you think about that? Or what's your opinion on this? What's your advice? Or and there's been times where they've said stuff that I'm like, that is straight from God. I need to hear that. You know? So yeah. Now thinking of how you grew up. And mm-hmm. sometimes when we aren't affirmed, it uh, it it can last for a lifetime. Yeah, kind of that need. Yeah. Tell me about your childhood. What? How would you consider your childhood? Oh, <laughs> my child. You know, my childhood was was complicated. Um, it wasn't. You know, I wouldn't say it was like terrible. Um, I just had so much inner struggles. So much inner struggles as a child. Um, that I feel like I didn't have, like, I didn't know it was safe to share. Like, I didn't know it was safe to, like, struggle. Does that make sense? So because I didn't know that was safe, it it all just stayed inward, and I dealt with it, you know, and that didn't help me, you know, over time. And then at the same time, everyone else around me, my parents, family, people, whatever, they it's like no one, people will do the best they can with what they can, and they didn't know how to help, right? So... Um, but yeah, I mean, my childhood was, you know, just crazy. <laughs> so, you know, I, I grew up in L.A., South L.A., in Hawthorne by Inglewood, went to school in Watts. You know, after I went to Hawthorne High, I mean, the hood, you know. Yeah. I'm a hood girl all yeah. the way. I'm like, I cannot live on a farm in a piece of land that is just so not me. I'm, I love the busy life. Um, I don't like how loud L.A. is, I will say that, because I love peace and quiet. But I'm used to it, you know, like the planes going over my, my house and because we lived like four miles from LAX. So and, you know, her gunshots, I mean, we heard everything, you yeah, know, and it, no there was no like fear, you know, um, I never walked at night, though, never walked at night. So, yeah. So my parents were married. Yeah, my parents were married. And um, um, my older brothers, you know, they you lived with us and stuff. Um, they went through a lot of trials when they were young. So along with that, you know, my brothers were just kind of in and out of like my brother me my younger brother's life i had an older sister too but she was she lived a lot further away and had kids already so um and these are all half siblings but we were all so close so we didn't feel like we were half siblings you know um and so yeah so i just know my brothers you know they were in and out of my life and it was chaotic and they've been users most of my life substance abuse and um in in trouble with the law and you know they would be gone and i would think that like i didn't i didn't know where they were we kind of joke on our family that like they were in college, but they weren't in college. <laughs> so, my mom tells me that like she used to tell us that because we didn't know we don't know what prison or jail is. So my mom's like they're in college, that's why they're not here. So and the joke now I'm just like yeah, private university, everybody wears orange, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so funny, but you know, so you know it was just like it was tough because I you know I really was close to my brothers a lot, so them not being around was hard. My dad was a workaholic, super hardworking, but I was super tight with my dad since I was little, so close to my dad. Um, Pretty close to my mom too, um, but my dad was just like, stole my heart, you know? Super daddy's girl, hold on to my dad's pants everywhere he walked when I was like three. Um, You know, he danced with me, I'd stand on his shoes and he'd help me dance, just, you know, sweet stuff like that. I mean, we had such a great childhood. you know um i would say up to we were like about five or six years old but um but things started changing you know a lot of things started changing you know my my brothers it was really hard being a blended family um my brothers were just going through so much they were hurting and dealing with a lot in themselves and they were young adults so your mom remarried or she had 
or was it your dad who had other kids? Yeah, those were his kids. So they we became a blended family, gotcha. right? And so then, he had other then kids. yeah, then they had yeah. So he he was a single dad of three. Okay. So yeah, raised three boys and everything. Um, and right before I was born, you know, they lost my dad lost his son who was about fourteen years old to leukemia. So. Um, a lot of things transpired. So, you know, then my brother and I came into the picture and, you know, our older brothers, when they were in trouble, sorry, yeah. <laughs> when they were in trouble, they right. babysit us. Right. So, but that's why we, you know, like we got so close with them because, you know, I loved, I loved spending time with them. So anyways, um, you know, I, I think just a lot happened, just a lot of things that were out of my control, you know, um, but uh, in elementary school, you know, I got bullied a lot in school. Um, so for a words of affirmation person worst to be exactly the worst thing ever. I mean, just it, I, I really do believe I was struggling a lot with depression when I was little and I didn't discover that till later. Cause my, I think my depression hit the peak at middle school when I was a teenager. Cause you know, you're the adolescent stage, you're discovering yourself and your body changes, your mind changes, your everything changes. So then it's just heightened even more. And, um, but when I was that little, yeah, I mean, I, I struggled with identity you know I just I just was bullied so much brutally um had a friend didn't have a friend I, they're my friend one day I don't want to be your friend because you're ugly I mean literally being told things like that as like a child you know think like just random um being cut in line and 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 I felt like I had to fend for myself constantly you know I remember one time oh my god it's so funny when I laugh about it now but I this girl cut me in line and I um told her hey you cut me and she's like so and pushed me so then we got in this big old fight and i shoved her and she had these i remember she had these horrible long nails and she slapped me and my i still have the scar she's cut my face and then i come into school looking like nelly with a big old band on my face oh my god it cracks me up now but it's like but i don't think i realized how traumatic that was for me as a kid like i didn't feel safe to have friends I so I started doing sports and I was kind of a tomboy and all my friends were guys so then the bullying got worse like they're calling me transgender lesbian you're a she man you just you're always with the guys and you're never gonna have a boyfriend horrible stuff right so and I just and I'm so grateful because I still even though all of that didn't stop me from doing sports I was doing football I was doing soccer and I was good at it so I just kept doing it you know and it kind of made like the girls scared of me so it was kind of an advantage at the time. So, yeah. So then going into middle school, um, you know, same thing was still into sports and stuff. And again, trying to figure who out who I am. And then then discovering that gang violence was a thing. You know, I saw a lot of gangs in school and younger kids because their older cousin was in a gang. They're getting in a gang. And, you know, like even young kids were already getting tattoos and we're like 12, 13 years old. So um you know and just so much was happening you know even sexual orientations were happening like some girls were saying oh i like girls and boys and all of that stuff was just so confusing like it was so it brought so much confusion you know into me because i'm like i don't know what's right and what's wrong but i'm so grateful because i feel like i always had this kind of moral compass in myself and i really believe god gave me that as a gift because I always had conviction about who I had in my life and I always had conviction about what I was doing. Like, even though I, so everyone else was doing it, I could not sleep on it. Like, I would just not have peace. Um, and I, when I look back now, I'm just like, that was kind of that thread of grace that followed me, you know, and kind of kept me, you know, even though I was still making mistakes and I was young and naive, um, God was still kind of speaking to me in that way, you know, and telling me, Hey, don't do that. Stay away from there. You know? So, yeah. So then just being that young, you know, it, it, things really, um, increased. It got worse when my parents separated, they were fighting. And then a lot fell on me at like 12 years old. You know, once my, my dad had left, didn't show up, didn't come back home one night. And it was just, that was it. And my parents were separated and stuff and then found out that, you know, that they weren't going to work out and that their divorce was starting and it was just brutal you know i remember my brother and i used to cry together to sleep because we were so traumatized i mean we loved our parents so it was kind of like what just happened you know we didn't know and um and yeah and I, that's when a lot of things heightened and um i just was getting involved with the wrong people i looked older since i was young so i would sneak into places and go to parties get drinks and then that went all the way to high school 
um, and then eventually just sleeping around, having every boyfriend and every horrible friend that I could have, and it just got worse from there, you know? Um, And even just, especially my mental health got worse from there. Um, But as young as seven years old, I always journaled and I always songwrite, was always songwriting. And I really believe, even though I didn't know the Lord, I believe that really kept me, you know? Because after a horrible day at school or after who knows what happened, if a boyfriend broke up with me and, you know, um, I just would write. I would just write and cry and hear songs that would minister to me and I'd listen to them and the piano and then I'd learn it and just by ear and just, just learn all these songs. Um, and so, and through all that time, you know, even when my dad left, my dad discovered I had a gift of music so he was constantly coaching me you know even through what happened with our parents separating he was still like pushing me you know musically um and yeah and it just he just always knew I had that gift but I just again it was like my secret thing like I'm gonna write and do my little thing but I don't want to tell nobody that I sing like that you know so yeah but then I had an opportunity in high school and I had an amazing music teacher who I just still love to this day um and she you know obviously saw I had a voice and would always make me solo and always make me do the national anthems at school and I was just like oh no you know I just it was like so cringing but but I'm grateful she did that you know because she saw something in me and she believed in me um so yeah and I did that for about four years in high school but again it was like that was my dream but at the same time I was you know just doing everything I mean just drinking smoking and living it up and you know and then and I had situations happen to me I got sexually abused several different times uh raped after a party by an ex-boyfriend I mean a lot of things happened that I didn't expect you know and I think for me what has helped me like oh just heal from like so many things that happened to me um from a young age was also owning the fact of how was I how was I an element in my suffering like, because there were things I should, there was choices I could have made different, you know? Right. But, yeah, but then there's the grace part of, like, I was young, I was naive, I didn't know, you know? But owning that and forgiving myself set me free. Because I, there was so much guilt I was carrying for things I did, Tell you, you know? How was that process of forgiving yourself? Um, honestly, just a lot of crying and a lot of prayer and a lot of just saying it, you know? Just confessing that I've... Lord, I forgive myself for my ignorance. I forgive myself for for allowing certain things for, you know, and some things weren't like my out of my control, like me being sexually abused was not that was out of my control. So you know you what I mean? Have that faith with God. Yeah, well later. Yeah. This was after I came to the Lord. So yeah, but yeah, but before I came to the Lord, you know, that wasn't there yet. I mean, I was just I wasn't even I hadn't even forgiven myself yet. So after my dad left, um, not even a year later, maybe eight months later, my grandma died. A month later, my other grandma died. Three months later, the pastor of our old church died. Um, and we were kind of a church-going family, kind of not. So I didn't. I wasn't really raised in church. I didn't know what ministries were. There was no youth. Everybody was like 40 and up <laughs> with just the piano and right. singing hymns. You know, it was yeah. super Baptist. Yeah. And, and I loved it. Like, I just like loved hearing their harmonies and the piano. I just thought it was the most beautiful thing. Yeah. But... I, I didn't know anything about ministry, so it's like, it was kind of like, where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Like, we were, my brother and I were like the only youth, you know? Um, so it was just very different, right? Um, but, you know, after all those losses and stuff, just back to back, just the anger, the hatred for myself, for people, for my, I mean, especially my parents, like I had such a hatred, you know? And I think it's because I really, really loved them, and the opposite of love is hate. I just, it switched, you know? But it was really because I wanted them to do what was right, and I wanted to feel loved and accepted, yeah. you know? Did you so, feel like if they had done the right thing, you wouldn't have had to go through all this stuff? Yeah, I could, yeah. It's you know, I blamed blame them, system. right. I mean, it, it is blame, but yeah. just It was a blame, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was feeling. Blame? Meaning, like, how, how, do you, how did you deal with that? Well, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> you know, at the time. Yeah. I how didn't deal with that at all. It definitely showed up in anger. I mean, I just was constantly having outbursts, yeah. um, you know, just destroying my room, screaming and crying. And that's when a lot of the anxiety and depression was heightening, about 16, 17. And I started to become very suicidal. You know, I started hearing voices. I started seeing things, demonic, you know. I was just so severely oppressed, um, so severely oppressed. And 
and I and I was about to drop out of school because I had like a 1.7 GPA. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, I was missing so many classes and credits. I just kept failing classes. I mean, all of that was showing up, you know. Um, and of of course, you know, like teachers were concerned. You know, why are you failing your classes? What's really going on? And then I would tell them, you know, my parents have been fighting. They're you know pretty much divorced and it's just been horrible you know it's just been horrible and then i didn't have a good relationship with my mom because she was hurting and i was hurting so we were just constantly clashing at each other and and then i because my mom worked so much now being a single mom i took on a lot just having to clean and having to cook and teach myself and help my younger brother and you know also trying to be the good influence because i'm the big sister it was just pressure 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 like everywhere and so i just felt like i had no escape i felt like a prisoner in my mind and in my in my even my environment you know i just felt like i had no space to even think to even feel and so that's why i think that's why i took such advantage of songwriting at a young age um but then i realized once that oppression was just increasing once i was 16 17 you know i had just went through a breakup i had a i was in sports I did a track and field um I got hit in the head with the discus a big metal disc and um I had to leave the uh the season you know because I obviously got hurt I went to Cedar sinai oh, yeah, yeah. it was for, at the Beverly Hills High Cedar School okay. and we were practicing and you know a disc hit me in the head and my head split open and it was an emergency I mean it was just so much happened and after that that I think my depression just got so much worse yeah um you know and um and yeah and then i just became suicidal and then and then that's where i had an encounter with god five times i tried to take my life tell me about the encounters with god what was the first time or how did that happen it, i didn't really encounter again that conviction in me was like this isn't the right thing to do but i kept ignoring it because all out of anger and rebellion and that that was a point where i was I, I knew I had that. And I didn't like that inner voice. I didn't like it. Yeah, so to not do it or what don't go with this friend God. or don't go to this situation. Like I just, oh, gotcha, and gotcha. I knew that was God yeah, in me. Yeah. Remember this, they sent me to a, a, I think a psychologist or social worker or something that, that was there. I didn't even know that we had one at the school, never seen them in my life. And she had me kind of do this quiz or like this test or whatever. And I was like critical, like stage four depression. Like, and she was telling me she's like you know i see nothing but sadness in your eyes and i just wept when she said that to me and she was telling me you know you really need help like you need to tell your parents what's going on and they can get you help and i was thinking i'm not gonna tell them that i don't even want to talk to them you know so i just was just really dealing with it on my own and so finally you know um right when i was before i was about to do that i remember we i had this balcony we lived in an apartment complex and i had like a 30 foot balcony and i had this sliding door and i slid it open and told myself i'm just gonna jump and just hang myself i don't care i did not i just didn't care it was just the craziest thing when i look back but man um and i remember before i did that i i'm telling you i was so set and so it was just like seconds before i was just gonna run and do it and i remember sitting there on my bed the minute i sat down i heard this voice literally enter my room and it wasn't this thundering you know god just showed up but it was just this quiet voice all of a sudden broke through i was in the middle of thinking you know about all this and it just it cut off my thinking and i i heard this small voice tell me this is not my plan for your life and that shook me to the core i mean i was so scared i was like what the heck was that that was not me because i was in the middle of thinking so i was like where did that just come from you know and I started, and God gave me a vision of my funeral at like 16, 17 years old, of my family just crying and seeing what it was going to do to everyone. And then I thought I was going crazy because I was like, whoa, 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 like what is happening right now? I had, because I had no more remorse. I had no more remorse in myself, no more empathy, anything of just how I was feeling. So then all of a sudden that conviction started to rise and wait, I'm really going to hurt people doing this and I'm going to hurt my, myself. And I don't even know, you know. It just was like this, the, just this kind of epiphany of like, wait a minute, am I am I making the right decision? You know, Did you see and like um, your mom, your brother, yeah, your I saw everything. Like it was like I saw my whole family. Just what did we do wrong? Like just just so much regret and guilt. Like so much was happening. Like just what I was seeing, and and then even just seeing myself. Like I wasn't even sure. 
of like my salvation. Like I was like, I don't really know where I'm going to end up. Is there a hell? Is there a heaven? I don't like I was starting to question those things. And you I had some faith already. Right. Some church knowledge. Yeah. Then, very faint. But it's like right. I didn't know Jesus died for me. I just thought he was some prophet that walked the earth one day. Like, but I didn't. I thought that was just a historical thing. I didn't think that applied to me at all. You know, right. that he was God in the flesh. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So then I just remember. um once that happened you know then i i felt like i couldn't sleep like because it freaked me out you know and then it stopped um you it did it stopped me and i remember not long after that you know my mom took me to the doctor and the doctor said you know we're gonna have to have her assessed i didn't even know what that meant and we came home and these people came and said you're gonna have to pack a bag and come with us and on the other end i didn't realize my mom was kind of signing my life away was like telling it and she it was hard for her as a mother because she wants to care for me and be here for me during this time but she knew if she didn't i, I was gonna die i mean i was i was honestly gonna die any day i could have just taken my life again and then that would have been it so and then i got taken to a psychiatric ward and saw so much in there a lot of stuff that was like sad i mean just like horrible i mean seeing people teens in worse positions than I was. So it yeah. Out of it kind of in some way to see such Yes and no. I mean it just again it awakened like, whoa, wait a minute. Like this is like this is like I, am I really am I really going crazy? Am I really labeled crazy now? Am I you know, I just I, I didn't want to be that, right. you know? And I just knew there was something that needed to change me. You know, that that was like my cry. It was just like I need a remedy. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And so when I got out of the hospital after two weeks, which felt like a month, it felt like forever, yeah. I got out and started therapy. And again, I still, it's just like, I still was like, this is kind of helping me, but it's kind of not. Like it just, I knew there was something that needed to happen in myself. And I remember I started, um, so then I started saying, well, let me just try this praying thing. I don't even know what praying is, but I guess I'll just try it. And I was behind on school. I got transferred to a different school in Watts. And <laughs> And I started making up my classes. Like I started praying over my homework and I ended up graduating on honor roll, which was a miracle. Just out of resolve. Like I'm gonna just, do it right Just Yeah, now. just like let me just I need to just try and get my life back, yeah. you know? And I felt like because I was praying over my homework, like and just yeah, like praying like Lord please let me have pass this test yeah. or God if you're there, you know, I didn't yeah. know what to say. And sure. you know, and again I was still music was still like a huge thing that carried me, right? Um, but yeah, and then I ended up I ended up graduating high school, the first really in my family to even get a diploma. And, and yeah, and I got honors three months in a row, like which was like a miracle. It just cracks me up when I look back. But yeah, I graduated like a three point something GPA. It was great. Yeah, it was just it was crazy. But that too was kind of God's grace in there, you know. And um, but again, I was still finding myself, and so I something told me to move. I knew I was going to move. And then my dad came back in my life, asked for forgiveness, told us, you know, I want you back in my life. There was so much you guys didn't understand or knew at the time that I couldn't tell you because you were young. And, and I knew I failed you. Like my dad told me that. And it was just an amazing moment. And he told me, you're totally welcome to move in with me. And I was like, that's the move. I was kind of feeling like something's going to happen. Right. So my dad told me, you can move in with me, you know, just go to school or get a job, whatever. Just something you know with your life after you graduate because you need to start you know adulting so yeah and then um i went to church one time with my aunt and that was it i mean i felt like every demon (laughs) that i was carrying on my back and every hurt and every broken part of me was just done just broken off and i fell in love with the word of god i fell in love with worship with i just and the word of god was just like it just beamed at me like everything i read i was like this is everything i've been looking for you know and i felt like that's what helped me through anxiety too because i was still struggling a lot with anxiety a lot with anxiety um and i would read that scripture from first john uh four or five first john five that perfect love casts out fear you know that fear involves those that are dealing with torment but if you and if you do fear you are not made perfect in love and I was realizing more and more, I need God's love, you know, to set me free from fear. Because I knew fear had followed my, my life. Fear was the root of my depression. Fear was the root of my anxiety. It was the root of PTSD. It was the root of it all. Fear of what? Just fear of, like, not belonging. Of not, like, of, does God really love me? You know, and that was all fear. 
like there was just no confidence of like because i didn't know the lord you know but once i did it's just like was more and more healing me and healing me and healing me and then my dad and i were trying to rebuild a relationship and that came with a ton of arguments because we missed like eight seven years of even being in each other's lives so he was a different person i was a different person and when my dad couldn't fulfill that fatherly like love i needed i would just run i ran, ran to god i would just i would just close the door and just fall on my face and just say lord i need you like i just need you to pour that daddy love i need right now my dad's not doing it so i need you you know my mom's not doing it so i need you you know it just and i gave up everything you know i just i had some boyfriend at the time i was like i'm sorry i'm serving the lord i'm out <laughs> and i just cut everything off and i fasted a lot too when i was a new believer and i feel like that really like broke off so much off of me um you know and so and when i look back it's like i'm so I, I, that's why I'm, I'm a believer in singleness too because before i was married now i just really served the lord and just gave my all to jesus and i really asked god to fulfill every part of me and i feel like if i did not had to do that i would not <laughs> i would not have a good marriage right now i would not i probably wouldn't even want marriage or even want to be married and not only that it's like i just wouldn't i wouldn't really be thriving like as a believer you know i just be surviving like everyone else and i didn't want that i was like i want god to fulfill every part of my life and i just i want to be content and enjoy like where i am you know and i really got a grasp of that i just was so like blessed and was just like you know if i never have kids if i never get married it's okay i was i was totally like and i thought that would never happen right. you know i thought like oh my gosh like i couldn't even live without having a guy in my life you know before and I couldn't live without even just having people. And I learned a lot of that. I did Celebrate Recovery too. And that I've been doing Celebrate Recovery for like four years now. Now coming on eight years of just serving the Lord all in. I'm like, wow, eight years. It's like crazy how time flies. But all of that, you know, just became a ministry intern, became, you know, started teaching the word of God. And um, it was just all a privilege. It was all a privilege because when I look back, I'm just like, God really does use the foolish things to shame the wise. Because I was just like, man, I was so foolish. Like Mary Magdalene had nothing on me. I've had way more demons than her. You know, I was so oppressed. I mean, it's just when I look back, I'm like, I never would have thought I'd be worship leading now. I never would have thought I'd be even talking about the word of God or even being in church, any of that. Like, I didn't think that he could even exist in my life. You know, it just was completely opposite. So, you know, when I look back, it's just, I'm so grateful. For where i am right now so and it yeah. makes sense now why your worship is so honest and authentic and yeah. clear yeah so that people can have that guidance yeah. that you received yeah and all the songs that we're about to record and yeah. over the next few weeks and hopefully here soon people will be able to hear this album what are yeah. you thinking i guess moving a little bit to the music and maybe we'll have to do a second episode on just the music because yeah. i think that might be another amazing story yeah but moving kind of uh, at least a little bit towards that um What's the theme of this album that you're working on and how does it relate perhaps to some of these things we're talking about? Yeah, so, oh man, so, <laughs> goodness. It's, it's, it's funny because I just feel like it's just been a long time coming because, man, so many people knew I sang for so many years and knew I wrote and I was a songwriter and everything. And, and it's like, when I tell people now, they're like, finally, you're like putting out something, you know? Um, and it just, it, it was all with myself, you know? I just had to believe in myself and believe with what God gave me. Um, and and just knowing that you know i'm not enough but he's enough and that's all right you know and that has really brought me to where i am and um and yeah so with this with this whole project you know i'm, I'm trying to release an ep i'm calling it pieces of my heart and um pieces of my heart was the first like legit actual song i wrote when i was about 13 and that was a pivotal time you know my parents had separated i was really depressed and struggling in school and and just not really having just I didn't feel like I had anyone, you know, in my life. Um, and so, yeah, so just even with that, and it, it really goes on to just talking about like how my heart was literally in pieces and how God put it back together, you know, and he put every part back together and he still is, you know, right, yeah. um, he's just refining it, you know? Yeah. So, um, and then there's other songs on there that do talk about my dad and how he passed, yeah. you know, and, um, man that's just gonna be such a emotional album because i feel like i've told you that every song in that ep um album whatever i don't even know what to call it mm -hmm. but mini album <laughs> yeah, sure. 
But every song in that EP is just like fragments of struggles that I've been in. Loss, grief, um, anxiety, depression, just being mentally down, um, beating up on yourself, struggling with self-hatred. You know, it's just like everything you can think of that we all, we all struggle with, like it's pretty much gonna be in there. Yeah. You know, and then just talking about how God affirms our identity, like this is who we are, like who am I? I am now a child of God. Um, you know, and I know the song that we've been working on too. Um, what's it called? <laughs> I forget what it's called. Um, building up again. Building up again. Yes, yes. I know. I'm like you, I'm like we can't remember. Yeah. Building up again, but you know, like how I t- talked to you about that verse, that second verse of just you know, no longer an orphan. I have been taken. The Father's heart is now my home. Because I struggled with being feeling like an orphan a lot of my life, just Lord. feeling very lonely. And so, you know, just even in that, just those truths are just man like they will just help break down you know any any kind of strongholds that we all deal with you know of just feeling like you don't belong feeling like you don't have you know and i don't think people realize how much just like upbringing in our story really shapes us and and it will leave good or bad marks you know what i mean on our mind and our heart and i'm just so grateful that a lot of the big stuff like man god really has healed in me you know and he still is i mean he's just he still is i mean and i'm so grateful it's like now i can examine myself and i feel like even these songs when i sing my songs i they make me re-examine myself you know of just oh you know i don't really struggle with that anymore praise god and then other things oh i'm still dealing with that okay i need to you know just focus in on that and take it to prayer and take it to the lord healing me you know so yeah i i want these songs and this project to just um for myself i wanted to reveal that this is who i am you know what i mean that i am not perfect and i am not um you know I, i'm not uh qualified it doesn't even matter you know it's just i'm just willing and i just want i want others to experience the healing and the freedom and the um just the grace the grace of god you know that i've experienced um and to just feel also um, emotionally free because we all can subconsciously just like shove things down you know what i mean and and this is also a project that's going to bring things to the surface for other people and it, it has brought the service for me myself you know um you know i feel like that's why we go through things in life you know after i lost my dad um, music was awakened even more um, because that was a pain that I didn't expect and it was a pain that like shook me to the core you know I thought the suicide was horrible I thought it, I mean losing my dad you know and him passing suddenly was like whoa I mean you know it just it awakened everything um, and it took me back to like that orphan little girl again that I thought I had really dealt with and I didn't you know and I, I'm, I'm almost glad that God allowed it because he was trying to get my attention in a deeper way, yeah. you know, and more and more in this walk, you know, our, our heart's like an onion. <laughs> the closer you get to that core, the more you're going to cry, <laughs> you know, okay, right. and it's true because it's just layer by layer. God is just doing a work, you know, in us. And so I just feel like more and more in, in my life, he's doing a work in me just layer by layer. If I let him, you know, and, and every day I'm grateful, I, I do feel like I'm really letting him now. Yeah you know and it's uncomfortable it's not that great but man it's just the peace that i have in my life right now and the the blessings i have in my life right now the gratefulness um i'm just so grateful it's like when i look at my life i'm just like this is so lord i couldn't i could not have done this i'm not like i am not that that powerful you know what i mean god is just he does so much for us way more than we can expect he answers exceedingly and abundantly you know, above all that we ask, and he really has in my life. So, that's right. yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Well, I, I can't wait to see this project come into life, yeah. and to I think, as I said, yeah, we're gonna have to do at least one more, if not a couple more episodes, to talk about the music. Yeah, but if mm-hmm. you um, if you're out there and you are relating to Elsie's story, this project is for you because yeah. it's gonna come out of this life, uh, this real life that uh, was lost and now is found. Yeah. that didn't know what right was and now she has found the righteous one his Amen. name is jesus christ Amen.